Okay, so you know what it is, man. So after that Tanks interview, after the second one, it's only right I brought, brought, bring the guy who basically kind of baited him. So, yeah. Introduce yourself. Um, my name is Kaf, Kafo Petter, and uh, just a point of clarification, I didn't bait out Tanks, uh, okay, he bait out himself. Okay, okay, so, my, all right. so obviously I've done some of my own little bit of research for, on you, so obviously uh, you weren't saying other wishes, you've done the speaking thing, that speaking, what, uh, you could have heard or something like Jack that. Patchy speech, so I speak out of world, yes. Yeah, so you've done that, so let, let's go more about you, like, how's your upbringing? Um, in what sense? In terms of like, how's how's it growing up in your household? Was it a positive? Was it negative or whatnot? Uh, I was born in Ghana, okay. um, moved to the UK in 2012. I uh, lived in Tottenham Hill on Ferro Lane Estate. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. A few minutes, actually not a few minutes, like just a minute or so away from where Mark Duggan was shot. Um, in terms of my household, yes, your typical African family upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, positive, I suppose so. Okay, okay. So, how did you get into journalism? How did I get into journalism? Oh, I suppose I studied this at university. Um, but, what, but how comes? Why did you, what? What made you say, oh, "I want to be a journalist. I want to do this type of stuff"? I could give the cliche answer if I I, I like talking to people, which I do. Um, mm. I I thought it had a knack for finding things out and. Um, discovering things which people didn't want to be discovered. Okay, so, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, journalism seemed like the best fit. I, initially, I wanted to be either a lawyer, a spy, or produce reality TV, um, but I fell into investigative journalism um, just through awkward means. But I'm here now, I'm stuck, and I like it. Like, obviously, you're not working at the BBC anymore. Where are you working now? Uh, I'm at ITV News. Nice, nice. More okay, okay, okay. So we can see you there on Channel 104. Is it 104? I think it's 104. Or is it 103? It's 103. I think. On Sky, it's 103, I think. Oh, I, I do not know. I actually don't watch television, so... Oh, fair enough. Uh, I wouldn't know. But yeah, 104, 103. One of them. One okay. of them. So, obviously, so how 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 how's the process of getting into the BBC? The process of getting into the BBC? Um, there are conventional routes. You can apply for jobs. Um, the route I took involved pitching a story. My first story was um, a university, which happens to be my university's poor handling of sexual assault um, cases. So I did some research, some investigative work, if you want to call it that, and um, sent it to the local BBC bureau, BBC Le okay. uh, That got me on the radar, and I was offered initially a specialist researcher role. Um, and that got my foot in the door, but whilst I was there, I continued to pitch stories. Um, so they can speak a bit louder. Um, I continued to pitch stories, and so they continued to well retain me. Okay, Mm-mm. so fair enough. So, so how did like how did working at Panorama become that like, not working at Panorama? How did like the transfer Panorama come up? Was it something random? Or was it something you were seeing online, thinking, oh, like, let me look into it? Oh, what can I say? It certainly wasn't random. Um, contrary to popular belief, Tanks is an early fraud star I've exposed. Okay. Um, I've, I, I've always had an interest in fraud or a fascination by it, a love for it, uh, so to say. Mm. Um, and it just so happened that I was investigating someone and that led me... Well, someone sent me Tanks' profile and mm-hmm. Panorama being an all-inclusive, wide breath type of journalism that is, we figured that it's a good idea to look into well, cultural icons such as Tanks. Okay, okay, because you know what Tanks, I can't lie. I feel like in, in this like scam rap type of thing, I think he's like the top guy, like there's no one else to look at other than him. Like TJX. Um, no, but in the UK, in the UK. Yes, in the UK, he is the top top guy so like so yeah so how so obviously how comes you didn't like um interview get an interview with him like how comes you didn't come well, we asked oh you asked so what do you say um he didn't reply in fact the first day uh, when, when we sent him we sent him multiple letters um Let, okay um we contacted contacted him uh by phone via email which he'll probably deny um and as he likes to 
talk about, we sent a letter to his university room. Um, the day we sent that letter, he posted a picture on his Snapchat at Heathrow Airport. Whether or not the two are linked, I do not know, but he didn't respond to us. Um, but he was flying to Barcelona when we sent him that letter. Okay. We also left a letter on his car. Okay. Oh, so oh, damn, we, damn. we really wanted to speak to him, but he didn't want to speak to us. And he'd say that he had nothing to say to us, which is fair enough. But mm -hmm. he can't complain about not getting to give his side of the story in mm -hmm. the panorama because he had ample opportunity. And the BBC always does give people um, due notice um, to respond. And if they don't, well, we say that. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So obviously, I can't find a panorama on the official BBC website. How come it got taken down? Um, Given the licenses, li licensing uh, system, I don't know too much about it, but programs and iPlayer are already available for a year. Oh. Um, that panorama aired on the 16th of August. As you can tell, it's the 29th of October, September. Um, so that year has elapsed. Um, mm. So everything after a year gets taken down. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, okay. So, like, so obviously. Before we go into the talking about tanks, mm. is there that as a journalist, is there any dangers of being an investigative journalist? That's um, like, dangers in what sense? In terms of like, for example, I was watching. I was when I was doing my research, I saw that you were doing, investigating the like COVID ra raves and whatnot. Yeah, I, I've been uh, without going into too much detail because I simply can't. Um, but especially if you're doing any sort of undercover reporting. There are dangers if you're found out. It's not pretty, it's not nice. Um, and if you're exposing bad people, they get pissed off, and rightly so. <laughs> um, and you constantly, I mean, I, mean I, if I check my phone right now, I'd probably see a message on my Instagram or um, my Telegram saying, oh, fuck you, or um, go die, or we're going to do this to your friends and shit like that. So yeah, there, there are dangers, but um, someone has to do it. And, you can always tell a real threat from an idle threat. Okay, okay, okay. So obviously, so obviously from people I from that I know of, mm. some people that I know were saying that people were onto you after that fraud documentary. Onto me in what way? In terms of like they were looking for you or they had your address or something like that. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. oh damn. They didn't have my address, but oh. they posted what they believed to be my address, what they believed to be my age or what they believed to be my girlfriend slash wife. Um, a good, someone who's, Hunts for hunts, uh, investigates people for a living, knows how to either A, protect their identity and protect themselves, or B, lay little false, uh, we call them red flags or red herrings. Okay. Um, and it's quite humorous to say that um, the people who claim to have my address fell for those um, mm. clues, or did they? Who knows? But obviously, that doesn't that put you off in terms of like, like being an investigative journalist. Even that, as well as that, like, since you're black as well, it's even like, say if you investigate certain things, people will be like, oh, that like you're snitching and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, how does that how does that affect you? Type of thing. Like, does that? Um, mm -hmm. I don't care. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can understand that I have people who I love, who I want to protect, and to have them put in the firing line as a result of what I do. Um, it's something to think about. It's something which I've considered a lot and it's something I consider in every investigation. So I first I check with them. Um, I have a very open conversation with them to see if they are happy and okay with me doing that story. And I make sure I'm not being reckless and stupid to put them in the firing line. Um, you might notice that there are no pictures of any friends or family of mine on my uh, public profiles. And that's one of the ways I make sure that I keep work separate and uh, my personal life uh, separate as well. And as for the you're black, you're snitching thing, well, to that I'd say <laughs> um, people who commit crimes, uh, those commit crimes against black people. So if we're going to play the race card, then they should consider that. <laughs> mm. I, I'd rather be a snitch than someone who adversely affects someone else, black or not, it doesn't matter. But if they want to bring race into it, you are committing crimes against people of colour as well. So, so I'd rather be a snitch than 
um, a criminal who commits crimes against my own people, everyone's my people, I'm a human being, we're all human beings, I love everyone. Fair enough, no, I respect that, I respect that. Like, about that, obviously, it's, uh, I don't, obviously not to go too much into this as well, so I've done a little bit more research and I've seen like something about you being a black conservative as well. Uh, I've never voted and I never will. Oh, how come? I just don't want to. Oh. I'm, I'm politically, I'm apolitical. Okay, okay. Because I was still just some things I saw that from maybe a couple of years ago saying. Yeah, that um, article was another one of my red herrings. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough. You know, fair enough. Then fair enough. Fair enough. So how did that did life change in any way after that documentary? In what way? Yeah, did it change? Like, what? Like, was it a good look for you? Or were you getting like heads up? Because, like, were people like? say bigging up your your thing because same way like for example on tiktok it was doing numbers even till now it's still doing numbers when people post clips of the documentary mm. well i suppose it, it there's no denying that it helped with um recognition of who i am and funnily enough yesterday with a very odd coincidence i was at the corner shop and um one of the customers said that i said oh you did that tank, tanks documentary uh and the shopkeeper, who I'm very friendly and I'm regular there, he said, oh, you're famous. You didn't tell me you're famous. Well, I'm not famous. Um, but, yeah, it certainly made me not a household name, but a name amongst um, a certain community, um, a certain culture. Um, but similarly, investigations are a long and arduous process, and it's not like daily news. You're not dropping things day in and day out, so you don't have that constant reminder for people that this is who you are every time i've dropped a story there's sort of a bit of a peek in uh who i am people want to know that uh but then i'm working on my next investigation so i go quiet for a bit that interest dies down weirdly this one has seemed to carry on but um yeah so it helps with recognition but that recognition always dies down because i'm not constantly um dropping stuff nor do i want to it's, it's it's a careful process. So how long did it take you to like do that whole documentary to film it? Um, we started officially started work in February twenty twenty one. However, the research process, I'd say, unofficially took my entire life. Oh. Not necessarily looking at yeah, tanks. But... Tanks was quite easy to find. Um, mm. It was finding out about the fraud world. You mentioned I went to St. Aloysius. Um, St. Aloysius, um, it's all, I, I've been in the fraud game longer than some of these people. I, I, it's, it's what I grew up with. I, mm. I, um, just to make it understandable to the general public, we sometimes simplify things, but... I know a lot about it. I had friends who were involved in deeds, and um, not that anyone calls it that anymore. So these are no, old people shows. still call yeah, it. That. People say, "Oh, yeah. that's good. Good to know." Yeah, I'm not that old. <laughs> um, clicking wasn't around when oh, I was. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. that phrase was a very, it's a very new one. Um, yeah, four one nine. People still use that, but um, th- those were heavy phrases back when I was growing up. People would come in and say, "Oh, some real square." If you want to. Um, mm-hmm. make pee, that kind of stuff. I, I've seen it all, I've lived it all, so, okay. yeah. Wait, so, were you like, were you doing it, if I'm allowed to ask you that, or or were you just um, around people? I was tempted. Okay, I was okay. tempted. Um, but, no, I never dabbled. So how comes that, what was the reason why you didn't get involved? Um, I grew up in a very Christian family, so um, <laughs> mm-hmm. we were taught not to do the right thing, so... I, ugh, even if, even though I wanted to, it was tough. And if I thought, oh, if my parents found out, I'm fucked. So. Mm, I hear you, I hear you, 100%, man. Um, it was more out of fear than anything. But even now, trust me, I, 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 I could, um, mm. I, I, I could scam anyone if I wanted to. Mm, what, get falls off the dark web, yeah? Falls off the dark web. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not just the dark web. Oh, God. Other ways. Um, <laughs> I hate you, I hate you. But, yeah, I could, but I don't want to because it's wrong and I don't believe in affecting other people for your own personal gain. Uh, no, you know, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So, obviously, no, actually, quick question. You know the, the Tanks uh, interview I've done? Have you, have you had the chance to watch it? I have watched it. He's very hard to keep track of. Uh, in terms of what, in what way, in what way? Oh, it's just very rambly. Um, and doesn't really make sense and he contradicts himself a lot but 
I I watched a bit of it. What do you I, think of it? Oh, I I. I, I thought you asked very good questions. There are opportunities for follow-ups, which uh, you might have missed. You sort of let him loose on a couple of points uh, when he contradicted mm. himself. But no, it was, it was very enjoyable. Yeah. Very enjoyable. Oh, yeah. It's a bit uh, reductive for him to be wearing a mask. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. So obviously now let's go. So obviously speaking to him on camera and off camera, he had some criticisms of you. So that's fair. And he was saying, because obviously, because <laughs> now, oh man, this is funny. Because obviously, you're saying how, like, firstly, he said something about how your, he said it was poor, poor journalism on your part. Yep. The BBC documentary. Yeah. Because he never said why. He was saying something about you proved that fraud is a, he, he said, this is his words. He, my point is that the, docu- uh, the documentary was poor journalism because at the start of the documentary, he talks, he literally proves, shows us that it's a victimless crime. He shows us the only people that suffer are the banks and the holder and no one cares about them. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's one aspect of fraud, a consequence which is often overlooked, and that's uh, the emotional trauma. Now, the process of getting your money back isn't easy and it continues to get harder. Having to go through that, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Now I'll say to Tanks, oh, it's a victimless crime. Well, okay, then let me scam your mother. How would he feel about that? Let your mother be scared to ever answer the phone and question anyone who calls her on the phone, claims to be their bank. That's not nice. Not so it's it. not victimless. Mm. And also, obviously, you're saying that, like, so he said that, and he was saying how, like, there's so many... I what was the other thing he said? He was saying something about, like, the, the documentary only did good because of him as well. That's another point he It only did good because of him. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you yeah, know, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So, like, so now what do you think? Because it wasn't the only big name we had. Okay. Uh, but it's 30 minutes. Uh, part of journalism is um, thinking about um, what what's the best way to make your points understandable, whether to inform, whether to educate. So sometimes stuff gets lost but if he thinks he's he was the only big name we had no mm, fair enough fair enough any uh, any big uk names or not very um, much though so. okay 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 because uh, no I, I can imagine a couple names but do tell sorry do tell no 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 i'm not I, you're I, not I, a snitch i, I ain't a snitch <laughs> man i ain't a snitch <laughs> but like off the record no nah, no nah, nah, okay, i can't snitch no nah, man i can't snitch man but like cool. what was the other thing he was saying like he also, he also said that like you guys broken into his uni com and whatnot. That's what he said in the Pokey Banks interview. Shout out Pokey Banks. Oh yes. Um, I said that that was a terrible interview. Um, oh damn. It, it was, it was, I say worse than yours. Yours, yours wasn't bad, but this was a terrible, terrible interview because it was simply like um, he, he he went on his knees and basically sucked <laughs> tanks off. That's what he did. Um, mm. There was very, very little um, holding to account. There was very, very little criticism. You might still have just given thanks to how to in that interview and said, you're my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I hear it, but you know, I feel like from my aspect and Poku's aspect, it's kind of a thing where, like, I, I'll say since we're more, like, in the culture type of thing. So am I. Like. Also, I, I literally just demonstrated to you that this is my entire life. This, I, I, I grew up few minutes away from where Mark Duggan was shot. I've mm. been around road men my entire life. I'm yeah, I, yeah. just because I don't speak with bruvs and G's and stuff like that doesn't mean I'm not 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 that, of, in terms of um, by that I mean in terms of the way we portray our platforms and whatnot. That's what we what meant. platforms. In terms yeah. of like my platform and Poku and you you know how, that type how, of thing. How, how do you portray it? In terms of like for example me that mostly I post mo- mostly Joe type of stuff and you know what I'm saying. Mm. So th- that's what I meant. I'm not trying to like get at you for speaking. Oh, no, 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 mm-hmm. no, no. And but it, it's not my platform. It's the public's platform uh, that I work for. I, I work for. A, I at the time I worked for a public broadcaster. Um, so part of that is collaboration, and it's not everything that I want that gets done in the same way that <laughs> mm. <laughs> the millions of people out there. We have to try and make things understandable to everyone. No, hey, 100 I think everyone got that point from the fraud community to uh, the people who live in Sussex. Obviously, Tank said after that documentary, 
he, that led him getting two charges. I think one was uh, money laundering and attempting to defraud the bank system. That's it. Mm. That's it. So, what do you think about that? Do you think that your that your documentary had a meaningful impact of that led to him potentially being charged? So, or do you think it was all separate? So, the journalists ju- journalists aren't police, um, and yes, the police come to us um, for requests of evidence sometimes. So I, I've been involved in other stories where that's happened. But mm. we don't just hand over. You might think we're snitches, but we don't hand over mm. evidence unless there's a court order, court, court order saying you must hand this over. <laughs> we're not criminals either, so if a court order comes in, we will hand it uh, over. But um, I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, mm. um, I kn- knew that there were investigations. Um, I, wa- I was approached um, to hand over evidence, but um, I gave the standard response, the actual ways of doing it, and there's a legal process if you want to get what we've discovered. So go through those avenues. I don't know what happened with that. I don't think... Um, we handed over any evidence because the time he was talking about getting those charges, it was after I was approached. So um, I don't know. And I'll just say one more thing about that. He, he continues to deny that he's Luke Joseph and we exposed Tanks as Luke Joseph in that documentary and the evidence, we, we were listed on the evidence um, or the discovery. So who did they arrest then if not Luke Joseph? Mm. Damn, damn. Okay, that's crazy. You should have asked him that follow up. By the way, Mm-mm, fair, fair. I should I should because that obviously, obviously, it's not. Because I don't want to go in too much and get get into his own his own thing. You know what I mean? Like, I thought, yeah. But I I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I should have went in with it more. Not go in, not mm. necessarily. I I never go in on anyone. I'm not Jeremy Paxman. If you've seen Jeremy Paxman, I don't go in on people. I just say, well, these are the facts. Um, can you explain? Uh, your interpretation of the facts. If you can explain how um, the person we exposed ends up being arrested and linked to the little evidence that we portrayed, then fair enough. But I don't see how he can. Okay. And I also can't see how he can deny he never drove a Corsa because there is a video online of him saying, I had a Corsa, then I moved to uh, an M class. So, unless that wasn't him. But then again, fraudsters are liars. So. Mm-mm. Fair, fair, fair. So how? So finding his inf- information, like how was it? Was it hard in any sense? Um, it wasn't the conventional way of finding someone's information. I know everyone. I've seen the memes about the carpets. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if you're looking up someone, you don't go looking for your carpets. But I was given the task of finding him. I wanted to find him. I wanted to get the opportunity to speak to him. And so he left little breadcrumbs, um, which led him to me. And to, it, it wasn't necessarily the carpet which gave it away. It was the fact that he was filming his carpets when he said, I can see Wembley Park from my apartments. Oh. It was the fact that he'd previously said that he's a student. So if we put those bits of information together, he's a student. He, lives in, he probably lives in student accommodation accommodation where you can see Wembley Park so he lives around Wembley Park you go to every student accommodation in Wembley Park ask if they have that carpet one of them did so that's where he probably lived mm. he posted a picture of his car you can see the number plates both the Corsa and the oh, um, Mercedes so you just hang around where we know he lives wait for him to come in and whoever gets into the car must be tanks unless he lets other people drive his car um, which is a crime unless they're insured, but I doubt he's letting other people drive his car. So, like, how come you didn't take the opportunity to like come get out of the car and try to talk to him and ask him some questions? What? In um, term, uh, like, confront you know, him? It, yeah, because I've seen that in other BBC oh, documentaries. Yes, yeah. So, how come you chose yeah. not to take that route? Because he wants to have an open and frank conversation with him. It's it's not fair to like jump up in front of someone who's not expecting it and go, "Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this?" Um, no, no, that's that's not how it operates. I give everyone a fair chance to oh, yeah. tell the aside. Um, trust me, we could. We 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 saw him many times. We actually found him. The documentary came out in what um, August. We found him in February. Mm, well, that that quick. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So um, I knew where he lived in twenty twenty. Fucking hell. So I had plenty of opportunities to 
go on and mm-hmm. um, and confront him, but that's not how, how it operates. Mm-hmm. Now, I, now I hear it. I hear it. So, what do you think about his his music in terms of like? Because obviously, yeah, I love it. I, I do. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I like. I, I love London Scammer. Um, we all do. Every member of the production well, we had to live, listen to it for <laughs> a lot of times. Um, so. Whether we like it or we just got used to it, I do not know. But I like London Scammer. I like, um, what's his latest one where he ends with Fuck the BBC? Love that one. Oh, and uh, it's not the latest one, but I know which one that you're yeah. on about. I, I like the GRM Daily, Sipping Lean and Take the Ground Away. I love that one. It's very, very catchy. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I like his music. He's a, he's a very talented artist and he wouldn't have had millions of views if he wasn't. I like his music. Mm-hmm. And if he stuck to that, then he wouldn't have featured on our kind of armor, but unfortunately he didn't. So how come you, did you go after him due to the fact of him selling those fraud kits allegedly, as I was say? Mm. What's, what's nothing alleged about it? Okay. But we'll, we'll I, I ain't listening, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um... Did we go, what was your question? So, was the reason you guys went after him, like, was the, like, did you guys go after him because he was selling fraud kits? Um, yes, and because he was a big name in the fraud game. Mm-mm. Uh, yeah. So, a big name has the power to influence people, and if you're using that power to influence people to a life of crime, then um, you put a target on your own back. But then again, do you think that that documentary kind of pushed him forward in his career type of thing uh push him forward in his career but definitely didn't push him forward in like his career fraud i mean he's not um sell- well he's not advertising the fact that he's selling forward methods anymore and you need that advertisement to get customers for your methods so i, I, I don't think i pushed him forward in terms of crime and in, in some ways i did tanks a favor okay um, mm-hmm. I just gently set him on the right path <laughs> like a big brother in fact there were times where i did feel like a little big brother to him um i didn't like the way he was led down the streets by the police in that video stopped and searched um i i I didn't like it It wasn't nice to see and i could hear um the emotion and the sadness in his voice um i i I didn't like it it was was Mm -hmm. sad and very i remember watching that and i had a small tear in my eye you know oh my god how could i forget these last questions man i might as well finish off here man the last bit I had was obviously, it's about tanks again. But basically, he was saying that like he he felt that that he personally said that the documentary was shit. He said he didn't like it. That's that's a fair criticism. And also, he said that like because he said it was kind of boring. And I think only recently he finished. He he's finished the whole thing, that's only a couple enough. months ago. That's fair enough. So that and he was saying how that he bit was that like maybe it's because obviously he he's the one who got portrayed in a certain night on the on the documentary but he was saying that he felt that like you only got that panorama role do you, as a like a quota type of thing it doesn't really work that way um <clears throat> the way it works is the person who brings the story reports the story so <laughs> if it was a um a white person who um did the research and brought that story would have been a white person who reports that story so I don't really know about any quota system at Panorama. Fair and not. if no one, if it was produced, if the person who brought that story didn't want to be on camera, then uh, it would have been narrated by an actor. So mm. quota, yeah, I mean, you can say that. I, I, I sense that's from bitterness, um, but yeah. Not fair enough. But yeah, man. Again, thank you for coming down, man. Big up yourself, like, come on, man. And don't do fraud, kids. It's bad. Yeah, don't do fraud. We don't pro- here at VE Media. We don't promote no uh, illegal activities. It's all entertainment purposes here. So yeah, man, study and do your look at your books, as your parents would say. Bow. <laughs>